This should be a video from Sean McDowell, whom you've probably notably seen me cover on this channel many times, but here's one of his latest TikTok entries. Are all sins equal? The answer is yes in one sense, but no in another. That's true of pretty much anything you ask about the Bible. You can always find ways to say yes in one sense, no in another sense. I used to have a little game that I would have people play with me where they would give me a topic and I would try to come up with Bible verses that would take both sides, both the affirmative and the negative on that. And very rarely did I fail to find verses that wouldn't support both sides. That's just the nature of a big book like the Bible. James 2.10 says that if you've broken part of the law, you've broken all the law. One sin makes you a lawbreaker just as much as any other sin makes you a lawbreaker. So that's the Ray Comfort shtick, right? That basically, have you ever told a lie? Well, then you're a liar. Have you ever stolen anything? Well, then you're a thief. And it is in this sense that we have been told, at least I was told as an evangelical Christian, that this is the basis upon which we will be judged on the final days and on judgment day and the criteria by which people can go to heaven. And that's why Jesus needed to come. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Jesus himself said things along the lines of, uh, you say it is wrong, you say it is wrong to murder. Well, I tell you the truth. Anyone who says raka, which meant you fool, is equally guilty of murder, right? So in Jesus's mind, insulting someone was on par with murder. This is the classic Christian issue. I think that's relatively non-controversial in Christian circles. Not equal in another sense. In John 19, 11, when Jesus is turned over to Pilate, Jesus says, he who turned me over to you has committed the greater sin. In Matthew 23, Jesus talks about the weightier matters of the law. And Proverbs 6 talks about the seven deadly sins in particular that God hates. So yes, all sins are equal in one sense, but they're certainly not equal in another. This is a distinction without a difference. The important part, of course, for those of us who are not Christians, is what's the dividing line between saved and not saved? So it doesn't matter much to us if there is crowns in heaven where you can get extra benefits in heaven if you're extra good or if in hell for so, so for example in Dante's Inferno which I learned recently was inspired a little bit by a an apocalypse of Paul which was written in the mid to late second century it was sort of like the book of Revelation but allegedly by the apostle Paul who was long dead by the time in that time but where Jesus was guiding Paul on a tour through hell. And in that book, interestingly, a lot of the worst punishments were given to Christians who had heretical views. So clearly this was a book written against certain political views that are theological views, I won't let me say, not political views, theological views that certain people had, doctrinal views. The people who were just murdering and stealing and things like that, they had certain punishments. All that to say, None of us care about levels of hell or levels of heaven when the question is, which place are we going? And if one sin, no matter how small, if you tell one white lie or you take one thing that doesn't belong to you as a child, or you have, you think that you think you fool to someone in the street, in essence, Jesus saying that would equal to murder. This is a distinction without a difference, Sean. No one cares. We Christians don't, or no, sorry, we non Christians, non believers don't care about what it is. This distinction that you've given to cover up for some what I would call Bible contradictions, what other might call Bible contradictions, you're harmonizing them in a way that doesn't matter. And that is the point of that. I guess I should, I'm going to let you listen to Sean's video and I'm going to later cut this up to try and make it make sense. So let's play the video. It says that if you've broken part of the law, you've broken all the law. One sin makes you a lawbreaker just as much as any other sin makes you a lawbreaker. But they're not equal in another sense. In John 19, 11, when Jesus is turned over to Pilate, Jesus says, he who turned me over to you has committed the greater sin. 
In Matthew 23, Jesus talks about the weightier matters of the law. And Proverbs 6 talks about the seven deadly sins in particular that God hates. So yes, all sins are equal in one sense, but they're certainly not equal in another. So yeah, so was that a distinction without a difference? Or am I nitpicking and not giving Sean a charitable assessment there? Perhaps he was only meaning to talk to Christians and in that way that he was trying to tell them that, I don't know what you'd be trying to tell a Christian since Jesus is required to forgive all those sins anyway. I'm not sure who Sean was talking to. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat what you think. Is there really a difference in God's eyes from one sin to another? Of course, the other part of this, which I, because I've thrown off by the sound issues. My apologies, everyone. I'll get them back on track. The other problem there is that Christians appeal to our intuition. Our moral intuition is allegedly the evidence that they point to when they talk about objective moral values. Now, the problem for them is that our intuition about morality is not that a single lie should earn you eternal conscious torment or that taking one item earns you eternal conscious torment or even that taking someone's life, even a murder, is worth is worthy of eternal conscious torment. That's not our moral intuition. And that's probably what Sean is brushing up against here. The intuition of everyone who's listening to him saying, you know what, Jesus doesn't sound right. That doesn't ring true to me when he says that you fool is equal to murder. So he comes up with this idea. Well, no, there's lots of verses that say that some sins are better than others, but he doesn't give us any anything to do with that. Salvation still hinges on the one thing. So I don't think he actually addressed the kind of concern that the person who's watching the video would have. But let me know if you agree or disagree.